all I know is that we have designed something that has features that are superior to other products. We have marketing that is superior to other products. We have traction and growth that is superior to other products. And there ain't much else more you can do. That's about as good as you can do, right? So in that video that says, you know, this is designed to do over 10,000 X in two and a half years, it is designed to do that. Just like Bitcoin was designed to go higher than it is now. Bitcoin was designed to take over fiat and to displace national currencies. And if it did that, or a larger portion of it than it's doing now, it would be up millions of percent, right? So it was designed to do millions of percent return. And it's already done 750,000 X of that return. It's really more depending on where you bought it, right? So, so I'll give you an example. On Ethereum, if you quote it from its ICO price to three and a half years later, it's a 4,500X. But if you got it on exchange, the price dumped under ICO price and it wicked down on Kraken and you could have got it for about half of ICO price. It was either 14 cents or 17 cents or something like that. It was, it was actually 15 cents. So if, you, if you're quoting the, the multiple off of ICO price to the top, you're gonna get a 4,500X in three and a half years if you're quoting the, the price on exchange and you go to the ETH USD pair on TradingView and look up Kraken, you're going to see it went from $0.15 cents to $1,500, and that's a 10,000x. And it did it faster than it did in two and a half years. So, and I know other currencies that have done, I think, better things, but if not better, equal, right? Like, these numbers are so gigantic that you almost can't reason about them. I was making a video about what your gains will be in the adoption amplifier, getting in hex early. The share price only goes up. The earlier you stake, the lower share price you get, the more, more shares you get for the hex that you lock. If you're the first guy, and this happened, this happened today, someone was the first person in the world to use uh, the adoption amplifier in hex. And when that person did it, the returns that he saw as potential, right? like the amount that would get paid out if no one else staked after him, were actually millions of percent, because that's the math. The contract knows that it's gotta pay out about, what, 180 billion hacks at the, on day 353, because that's what's unclaimed, right? And nothing, nothing's claimed yet, because claims don't open until 7 p.m. EST tomorrow. So if you're the first guy to stake and you put in like if you're the first guy to put in Ethereum into the adoption amplifier and you only put in one GUI, which is 0 0.17 zeros and a one, right? You would get all 180 billion hex on day 353. Now do that math. That math is 180 billion divided by 0 0.17 zeros and a one. And when you divide by a fraction, it just multiplies, right? And so really what you're doing is you're taking 180 billion and then you're slapping an extra 18 zeros on the back of it. And then you have a number that's impossible to reason about. It's more than there is grains of sand on the earth. I think there's 7.4 or 7.5 e to the 14th or e to the 15th grains of sand on earth. So in hex, we actually have enough units that you could price each grain of sand on the earth with a resolution of three or four um, hearts. So in, in Bitcoin, your, uh, each Bitcoin is made up of 100 million Satoshis. And in Hex, each Hex is made up of 100 million hearts. And when you stake them, you get staked hearts. Got a bunch of little jokes in there. <clears throat> Hex is so good. People like to say the word. It's quick, it's easy, it rolls off the tongue, plugs into a million puns, hexual healing, <laughs> excited, excellent. Uh, Dude, so if you, want to make, if you want to make good hex puns, you can replace the first letter of words that start with like any consonant and then have EX as the next words. So like, hex cited wouldn't be one. You're appending an H to the beginning of it. But like, uh, hex drugs and rock and roll, kind of a verbal play. Or I don't want to use the hexual healing again because I didn't think it was that good, but I guess I am going to. We're replacing the S with an H, right? So... And, and everywhere you look in the world, there's hexagons, all of the places that are trendy and cool and technological. If you go on YouTube and you do a search for uh, Doug DeMuro, Lamborghini hexagon, hexagon, the Lamborghini Huracan, hex, just every Lamborghini is covered in hexagons now. The rims have hexagons in them, the buttons have hexagons in them. 
It's a beautiful, technological, modern um, brand that you can't misspell and is more futuristic than any other shape. There is no more futuristic shape than, uh, than hexagon, at least in the Western culture that has movies I watch, right? And the, the images that I look at. And you've got a pretty limited range, right? Like, there's not that many platonic solid kind of shapes. And the hexagon it isn't actually even a, a platonic solid. So a platonic solid is when you can take a shape and then enclose an area with it with no other weirdness. You can't do that with a, uh, with a hexagon. You end up with a truncated dodecahedron, which is actually just a soccer ball. And that's what soccer balls have. They have hexagons and pentagons mixed. Totally relevant. <laughs> um, I know that because I, you know, designed ideas like, hey, you know, we want to go to the moon. All right, well, let's make a hexagon moon. Okay, so how can we get a moon uh, skin, a moon texture over a rotating spherical mass? And someone volunteered and did it. And so now we have a hex moon GIF, right? Just, I love, I love the hex community. Like, there's a lot of really good people. Even people that I was hard on when they first came aboard, um, they just stuck with it and became useful and became awesome. You know, some of the some of the demo videos on like how you can sign um, using Coinomi to to sign for your Bitcoin statement. You know, I didn't have time to go and do it. I'd love to. I'll probably get around to it at some point. But uh, you know, someone else did it, and we linked to it. We're like, yeah, here you go. You want to learn how to sign a Coinomi? It's you know, there you go. That's how you do it. Another guy did, uh, he did one for how to, you know, sign with uh, Ledger. You know, you get your Electrum wallet and here's how you get your Ledger to sign through it. It's a little bit like, the manufacturer should do this stuff better, but I don't know. When you're smart and creative, everyone should do everything better, including me, right? Like there's just an endless, an endless amount of better that can be done. Like now I've just noticed my candlestick holders covered in green wax. So somebody's gonna have to clean all that up. And that was smart though, see this? I didn't let it get the chair. Smart. You know, I like this chair. So Hex, how much returns could it really do? I think it could do better than 10,000 X in two and a half years. Why? Because Ethereum did that. And Ethereum addresses a smaller market with no referral program. Like it, its original sales pitch was world computer. And they gave up on that. And then it was like uh, distributed anonymous companies. And then they gave up on that. And then it was like, uh, I guess now it's distributed finance. Maybe that one will work, right? Bitcoin's had the same kind of narratives. Bitcoin was like, hey, we're gonna, we're gonna be the platform that everyone else builds on. Nope, and then everyone that built on it failed. Counterparty built on it, five-year coin, failed. And the funny part was, when Counterparty and Omni failed, they do less than $100, $100 of volume a day. They, they were built to allow other things to build on top of Bitcoin. So not only did nothing else succeed building on Bitcoin, but the products that would have allowed that to even happen also failed, right? Now when I say failed, it's not really fair. Like, I know Omni still functions and it's still usable, but if you bought that coin, it ain't never going up, right? It's, it's over, right? $100 a day of volume after five years, call it quits. And it even had adoption. Tether used to do a ton of transactions on it. And the adoption wouldn't even make the price go up. So if you've got utility and you're, you're doing good work and you're making the world a better place, but you still can't get the price to go up, what are your options? Make the world more better? It turns out that utility is not what makes these things go up in price. What makes these things go up in price is people pressing the green buy button. If you press the green buy button in hex now, you're gonna get a lot of hex and you can get it first. If you lock your coins and you lock them for longer, you're going to get even more hex because day 353, that's when all the big, big payouts happen. Then guess what happens? Then there's no more inflation, 3.69% maximum. And it's very unlikely to reach that maximum of 3.69, which is lower than Bitcoin has ever had. Maybe it's at three point, maybe, maybe they're tied at this point because it was like 3.8, like a month ago, who knows? you have 0% inflation. If you're an average length, average size staker, you have no overhead, you have no servers you have to run, you have no electricity bills to pay, and you have, you have no other people 
being paid inflation that have electricity bills to pay, selling the price down while you're sitting there holding. The only people in the system that are diluted, the only people in the system that feel inflation in theory, right? You can't really feel it unless you're onboarding less people than the inflation rate. If you're onboarding less people than the inflation rate, then the price is likely to go down, then you're not likely to be making profit. But every cryptocurrency that is a mined cryptocurrency has had high inflation rates to pay for its network security, to pay for its miners, and the prices have still gone up insanely high anyway. Imagine how much higher they would go if they didn't have that load and that overhead, right? There's just there's this nuance. There's so much nuance that, that I'm the only person that tells you. People tell you Bitcoin's deflationary. It's not, it's inflationary. And it's had two inflation rates drops before, and it's having its third one now. And the price is dying into it, which has never done before. I know why, because we over pumped from the plus token Ponzi. I'm still bullish Bitcoin, I still think the price will go up. You just gotta wait for the next Ponzi, right? Or the killer app, ain't gonna be a killer app anytime soon. Can't do DeFi, can't, like there's just, they don't want other things to build on top of them. They, they tried to kill Counterparty. They, they, they used to have 80 byte uh, space in the opcode. Counterparty used it. They were like, all right, well, we'll just shrink that to like 30 bytes or 40 bytes and now, or bits, Google it, right? And they just tried to kill them off. And then they had to change all their code. And they just went and failed anyway. So I'm, I'm trying to tell you the truth about things. I want to tell you the truth about Bitcoin. I want to tell you the truth about Ethereum. I want to tell you the truth about Hex, right? I should say this. Again, in case you guys didn't hear me, I do not know what the price is going to do, and neither do you, and neither does anyone else. The best we can do is guess, right? And if you're gonna guess, say you're not a financial advisor. I'm not a financial advisor, right? I know what it's designed to do. I can describe design intentions to you. And since you're the network, and you're the one minting your coins, and you're the one minting your rewards, and nothing can happen without you, probably could actually be more liberal talking about the gains, right? who wanted to be. I, I prefer to be more conservative. The design of this thing is what makes it awesome. The design of this thing, the community, the peer-to-peer -peer trustless network is what got us where we are now and is what is gonna take us to the future. It's all there.